Hello, the Darkness Roof 44 here. In this video, I'll be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of serial adders and why you might consider using one over a more traditional parallel adder. As always, a world download will be included in the description below, and if you enjoy this video, consider leaving a like or subscribing. So, first of all, what is a serial adder? Well, basically, a serial adder can be thought as a just a one bit adder um, with some a bit of carry logic um, in which your inputs are fed in serially so one bit at a time, and you get your output serially as well, so one bit at a time. This is typically done with shift registers, so I'll have two shift registers of my input, and this um, additional shift register uh, for my output, um, but you can just input data in serial and have it being output in serial. Um, these are just um, for ease of use. Now let's see how the circuit works. Basically, the circuit's made up of five different parts, so we have our two input shift registers, um, our output shift register, um, this clock over here, which um, clocks everything, all the registers and stuff, and then the last parts are the actual adder itself, and then this um, D flip flop down here. What happens is when the adder receives the input signals, it's going to add these, and then it will output the results, so the sum of the addition, to the output shift register, and of course this will store that result. However, sometimes when you add two 1-bit numbers, you can get a 2-bit number. What happens when this occurs is your um, first bit will just be saved as usual. However, your second bit, the carry bit, will actually be sent down this wire down here into this D flip-flop over here, and then it can be used um, in the next addition. So when you send your next two 1-bit um, numbers down the wire into the adder, um, this carry bit is also added to that um, so you're always adding the carry if you get a carry signal. In a bit I'm going to talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages over why you'd use one of these compared to say a regular parallel adder, but first of all let's actually show this off, so I'm going to do a few demonstrations first so we can see it in action. So first of all let's add the numbers 3 and 5. So if we put 3 in this input over here, so we just need to load it into these shift registers, and if we put 5 into this one, um, the way I've designed this is that when you clock it, it will load the number into the shift registers, but it will also do the addition. Um, that doesn't really matter, but it just means we have to remove the number um, as well. So what we're going to do is we just clock it once like this. So the first result of our addition is out, which is 0, so that's the first bit. Um, but we also need to remove these like this so we don't corrupt any data. Um, now let's clock it again. Then we get the second bit, which is another zero. Clock it again. We get the third bit, another zero. And if we clock it again, we get the fourth bit, which is a one. Um, and if we just cut these ones off, because um, we are only dealing with a four bit number as the output, three plus five is of course eight, and that is what we get as the result. So now let's try the same thing, but with a slightly bigger number. Um, let's just use two 8-bit numbers, so I'm just going to do, um, say, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, um, 0, 1, I guess. Um, and then for the other number, we can do, say, 0, 1, 1, um, 0, 1, 0, and then we just have two more ones like that. Um, now, what this is, is we're adding 45 plus 107, and this should equal 152. So, um, while we could clock it all manually, I'm actually going to use this clock over here that I set up. So what you do is, because we're adding two 8-bit numbers, you would want to clock it nine times. And the reason you clock it one more time than your input is because you also want to get the carry bit out. However, in this case, the carry bit out is a zero anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But normally you'd always want to clock it that extra time. So first to add these two numbers is we're just going to clock it once. Um, so we can actually load it into the shift registers. And now if we just turn all our inputs off so we don't corrupt any data. So I'm just going to turn on this clock. And we should be getting our output, as you can see. And I'm going to stop it around now. And as you can see, I've shifted it almost a bit too far. But our result is 152, which is 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, and 0. So this additional bit's not actually needed. 
and that's basically how we use the serial adder. One thing to note is if you don't want to have this clock signal where you might have some complicated timings, is that if you already know the size of your inputs, so we're using, um, say we're using 8-bit numbers as our input, you can just have a pulse generator which will generate, um, say, 8 pulses, or so the size of your input, plus an additional extra pulse to get your carry out. Because if you don't generate that additional extra pulse, your carry will remain in the system, and then when you next add some numbers, you also get that carry. So that is also kind of one of the advantages or disadvantages to the system, but I'll talk about that more in the next section. So let's now talk about some advantages and disadvantages to this adder design. So I think the first problem you can kind of just, um, well, easily see, I guess, um, especially with our demonstrations, um, is that the system was fairly slow. So of course we were just adding two 8-bit numbers and it took um, multiple ticks. So we had to click the button multiple times or um, use a clock signal multiple times. And it just took a long time to actually give us our output. Um, it wasn't super slow. And of course this design isn't the most optimal. Um, it can definitely be made faster and that's why um, it'll be in the world download so you can use so you can try and modify it if you want um, I did try make two other designs um, But I never finished these because of just timing problems So this one over here was based off a ripple carry adder, but this just had timing issues ironically um, And then this one over here was a similar ripple carry design, but with comparator XOR gates instead But I also had issues with this so I just used um, I just modified um, a carry cancel adder design that I had and this worked out really well because the adder circuit has very good timing uh, control and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's slow compared to a parallel adder. Um, with a parallel adder, um, with our newest tech, so like a carry cancel adder, if you used a parallel adder, you could probably get it to like three ticks for each addition, where with, with an adder for this, um, and say you're adding two 8-bit numbers, um, you have the time of the adder times the amount of um, data bits you have. So say my adder takes um, three ticks to add um, and I have eight bits, I have to do three multiplied by eight which is 24 ticks um, to actually get our result out compared to three ticks with just a parallel adder. So that definitely is one of the main disadvantages with this design, it's just the sheer speed of it. Another disadvantage is that most computers use parallel data so you're probably going to have to be converting to serial then um, shifting it in then converting back to parallel again and um, to putting it into your computer. And that's just very inefficient. You might as well just use a parallel adder anyway. However, if your data is already in serial and you want a serial output, this design is quite good because then you don't have to do any of that converting. Um, there are definitely much better designs of shift registers than these. Um, so there are much better designs for this adder as well. However, if your data is already in serial, uh, you don't need to do any of that converting, so it can actually be um, a bit better. One of the other advantages I'd say to this design is just the size of it. Um, it's a lot smaller than an 8-bit adder. Um, of course, it can be compacted. All of this circuitry can probably be put underneath. And this design can definitely be shrunk down a bit without compromising on speed. The main like, large aspects to this circuit are the shift registers. But, um, of course, if you just remove them or shrink them down, um, the circuit's going to be quite small. So the other advantage to this adder is that you can kind of use whatever number of bits as you want as the inputs. So I could use 8 bits, I could use 16, I could even use like 64 if I wanted to. Um, and it should just work. Of course, it will just be very slow. So the reason why this is kind of an advantage is because it's very easy to do. You just have to, of course, pulse it the number of bits you have. Um, this is easier than using a parallel adder because you, of course, have one tiny module just doing it all. Um, and you don't have to worry about any like um, redstone signal strength running out. So typically most others used today um, in Minecraft are probably carry cancel adders or some similar variant of it. And the main issue with these adders is that you have all these like towers in them. And of course signal strength runs out and you need to repeat the signal. Um, in a one bit adder like this you have no problems with repeating signals. So it means um, design wise this is actually really simple to do. Um, and you don't need to do any like creative stacking and stuff um, and making sure um, any of your things are repeated and extended. It just makes timing control a bit easier as well, um, even though the design of course is just slower. The other advantage to this design is that um, say you are only operating on say like 8 bits at a time as your data length or your word length or whatever, um, but you wanted to add two 16-bit numbers. So with a regular adder you'd have to have a special instruction to do this 
um, and you'd also have to have a special register or something to store the carry. However, this adder already has that register, which is just the D flip flop. So say I add two lower 8-bit numbers, then two upper 8-bit numbers. Um, with an 8-bit parallel adder, you'd first add the two lowers, save the, um, the carry out to like a special register, then you add the two upper numbers, then you'd load that number back in. Um, so you can add that as well. But with the serial adder, it's already saved down here in this D flip flop. And if you really don't want this um, being saved when you add the two numbers, um, you can just reset it by going like this or something. So what happens if you want to add two 16-bit numbers? First of all, you'd add in the two lower 8-bit numbers um, and it'd give out the result. Then when you put the two upper 8-bit numbers, the carry is already stored in this D flip-flop and it should just um, output as well. And it should just work. Um, so it's a bit easier to do like large number addition with this adder than a parallel adder so yeah that is one of the advantages so as always the word download is included in the description below and i hope people like say take this design modify it a bit and make a slightly better version because there definitely can be better versions made and i hope people will also share what like different things they make with these adders because it's a pretty cool concept so yeah i hope you like this video please like and subscribe and i'm out